Hello, welcome. This is Martha Hines, and I'm here today with Verena Burrell. And we wanted to bring you some of our thoughts and our feelings about this upcoming eclipse, total eclipse, total lunar eclipse in Taurus, which so many of us are anticipating and talking about and feeling very strongly already. Probably many of you are, and you many of you are, already have your own feelings on it, and we would love to hear about that. Um, but specifically, what we would love to do in this video is bring in not only our feelings on the major planets and aspects of this eclipse, but also bring in our sense of the additional energies and storyline when we bring in the goddesses. And in particular, <clears throat> what's most alive, I think, we'll see what comes up in our conversation, but for sure, Ceres, Diana, and Hygieia, and then also um, also bringing in their relationship to Chiron, and probably other things will arise when we're talking. Um, so yeah, we we want to just start by giving a little bit of background on our approach to the goddesses and our approach to astrology in general, which we have explained in other videos as well. But Verena, do you want to start out sh sharing a little bit about that and then I could follow up? About the goddesses or about uh, our... our our approach to like, why are we bringing in the goddesses? And yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I can start. So I think for you and me, for both of us, it's really important to um, don't see astrology as a theory or as detached from life and from our feelings, but astrology is quote unquote, just um, the reflection of an overarching energy that it is in the field and that we can feel in our body and our life that we can see everywhere. And I think that the goddesses are offering us an opportunity to um, get into a deeper connection with the cosmos. For me personally, what brought me to the goddesses was that, um, especially the feminine archetypes of the goddesses, um, they were um, they felt closer for me, um, and it was. Um, a way for me to um, explore and to um, discover different facets of feminine energies. And I don't mean female, I don't mean the gender, I really mean feminine archetypes of feminine energies and different facets of that. And that helped me to um, strengthen my own um, connection to the feminine, to the feminine principle within me and in the world because I understood oh okay there's not just Venus and the moon even though I love Venus and I love the moon but there are so 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 many different archetypes facets variations um, how feminine energy can express itself in the world and in ourselves and I think that the working with the asteroid goddesses helps us to gain another perspective on certain um, transits, on certain um, energies that are in the field. And they have often a very healing aspect there. Um, and I personally have the feeling that, especially if you who is watching this is, um, has already or wants to evolve an astrological practice where you are really one um, um, seeking the connection to the planets where you are really maybe in meditation and prayer and connection to the cosmos and from my experiences the goddesses are the perfect entry point because um, they they really love to interact with us and they are so um, so powerful but very um, um, they are archetypes that you can you can have a feeling for them pretty pretty easy and pretty um, fast, I think. But yeah, I will give it over to you, Martha. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you. 
Um, I agree with all of that. And I, I, I felt really called to make this video with you because about this eclipse and specifically bringing in the goddesses, because I think this eclipse is the perfect example of our, your, and my overarching, overarching, um, perspective and approach to astrology, which includes the goddesses and which also includes a restoring of all of the archetypes involved with astrology, um, where we're seeing, we're approaching each of these archetypes and particularly the goddesses as living, breathing energetics, not a stuck story that will always be the same. So we approach all of these energies as energies that are us, that are moving and changing and growing all the time. And their stories are dynamic. They're moving and changing and growing with us and with the world. Um, <clears throat> and so we'll say more at the end, but we're, we're going to be holding uh, an entire goddess series starting in January, 2023, which we're very excited about. Um, and also next Monday, November 7th, for anybody watching this before November 7th, we're going to be holding a an eclipse gathering, um, which we'll say more about at the end as well. But in terms of this eclipse itself, um, I'll take a turn talking about it and then you, you can take a turn. So Martha, shall we um, show the chat? Show the for yeah. a moment yeah, that everybody uh, knows which goddess we want to um, have a look at. Yeah. So when, so this is a, such an amazing example of why the goddesses are so important to me and why I don't want to forget about them <laughs> as I'm looking at anything going on in life or in astrology. Um, so initially I looked at this eclipse and I saw what everybody's talking about, which is that this is an incredibly powerful total lunar, lunar eclipse. <clears throat> we have a full moon at 16 degrees Taurus conjunct Uranus also at 16 degrees Taurus, um, very close to the North node of the moon, which is at 13 Taurus. And then conjunct the sun opposite the moon and Uranus is Mercury at 15 degrees Scorpio and Venus at uh, 20 degrees Scorpio. Okay. So when I, when I plus, was feeling, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yes. Plus, um, just to cover it all, we have yeah. Mars retrograde in the square to Jupiter and Neptune in Pisces and in an in conjunct to Pluto and Capricorn. And the Saturn Uranus square, of course, is very close again. Yeah. And yes. Saturn is actually squaring the nodes. Yes. and squaring the sun and the moon on this full moon right yeah so that saturn uranian square energy is huge everybody's talking about that that's you know so like if i just feel into those basic building blocks of this eclipse what do i feel i feel what everybody else is talking about pretty much which is um this is massive potential for incredible change and you know uh the typical thing people are talking about is old versus new which is not really actually my perspective on it but i can see that here i can see the wisdom in that way of talking about it and another thing that i feel when i just feel into just this without taking into account all the other goddess stuff is this sense this uh, uranus opposite mercury is huge to me gigantic and i feel like Absolutely, I can imagine um, in the energetic of this whole eclipse, there could be for many of us and for the world a sense of um, flashes of insight coming in, like flat, like downloads, like major transformational information and new ways of seeing things, right? And and I I I still think that's all true. <laughs> But then I was going into my praying, which is where I tend to get most of my feeling about anything astrological and just about life. And what I was really feeling the most strongly in the last few days was this sense of 
I kept getting shown and told to come back into the wisdom of the earth, right? Which again, makes sense. This, this is a full moon eclipse in Taurus conjunct Uranus in Taurus with the North node in Taurus. Of course, it's going to be about the divine wisdom of ourselves as earth and of our bodies. So that's, that's absolutely huge. Um, but it was also the sense of in my prayers, it was the sense of not only the wisdom of our bodies, but this need to really ground and hold ourselves gently um, in the knowing that we are earth bodies. And so <clears throat> like Uranian energy can have a tendency in my experience of it to be somewhat disembodied in a sense like to fly off into like a, a more of an electric energy and it can feel really ecstatic um to me and uranus happens to be in taurus and this full moon is in taurus conjunct the north node in taurus so it's but it's so it's i can see just just in those energies it's helping us to maybe find the wisdom of the divine through this grounded experience of life Okay, but then, but, th but then I was like, where is this nurturing quality coming in, right? Like, what's this energetic I'm feeling of this nurturing thing? So then I looked at this full set of aspects going on and I went, oh, wow, of course, Ceres is going to be exactly trining the north, I mean, the, uh, the full moon and Uranus, because it'll be at 16 degrees Virgo which also happens to be sitting very near my moon, et cetera. Right. <laughs> um, and Ceres will be opposite Diana on this eclipse. And then. Can you Ceres... show it in the, in the, um, that oh, yes. knows the glyphs. right here. So here's Ceres, here's Ceres, here is Diana. So Ceres is in a trine to Uranus and the full moon. And then is opposite Diana and in a T-square with Hygieia. And then as you pointed out before we started recording, Verena, Hygieia will be exactly trining Chiron. So you have, Verena has made a previous video about Diana. We just did a workshop on Diana together, uh, which happens to still be available for anybody who's called to Diana. Um, I just did a video about Ceres and Persephone for EA Zoom, which you all can watch. And I also just recently did a video on Hygieia. <laughs> so, so these goddesses all are very much in our minds. Yes. And I already did, um, for everybody who's watching, I already did two videos about Diana for EA Zoom. So you can. Oh, find yes. It. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Definitely. Exactly. Um, so. So anyway, so when I, uh, and I would love to then turn it over to you and hear your thoughts, but just on a basic level, what I felt was, oh, wow. Okay. So we're going to have Ceres trining the full moon and Uranus, which to me, Ceres brings in a few things. It brings in this element of nurturing. It brings in an element of potential grief. Um, and Ceres in Virgo, you know, is very grounding again. And and then opposite Diana, Diana in Pisces, and you have many more thoughts on this, you know, again, is, is it an energy of wilding, like rewilding us in ourselves as the divine? What is our true wild, untamed nature um, as beings of the divine? And then we bring in Hygieia and Chiron, and there's all this potential of healing and health and hygiene and all these other things. Okay. So it's so much to bring together, but I just want to say one more thing and then I would love to hear your thoughts. So the 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 feeling I got when I really dropped into this was um <clears throat> in this time frame, the past couple of years, and then also moving into next year when we're gonna have Pluto squaring the nodes, <clears throat> you know, there's so, 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 so much energy around change and transmutation and transformation and things dissolving to become something new. Um, and that can feel 
really scary. And with Saturn squaring the nodes and, you know, all of this Saturn squaring Uranus energy, we can feel a lot of fear about change and a lot of fear about this, um, this inevitability of change. And then when I dropped into my prayers and I was looking at the, especially the energetic of Ceres trining that North node, what I got reminded of is this feeling that when things are changing, there's a need to hold it very gently, you know, to like Ceres energy for me has to do with, she's the mother of, uh, Persephone, who goes into the underworld and has a majorly transformative experience in the underworld. She can even be thought of as a midwife to death, right? And so Ceres, as the mother, is freaking out. I've lost my baby. I don't know where she went. Or maybe she went voluntarily, depending on which version of the myth you're thinking of. Um, but I don't want to lose my child what the heck is she doing? And I'm in grief. So the same thing can be true for us with any kind of change, like with ourselves changing, with someone we love changing, with the world changing. And this change of life is inevitable. So in my own life, I have been one really concrete example is that my, my, I have two kids and my older one has been going through a lot with their gender identity and which I fully support and I fully, you know, celebrate and all of that. And also like series, like me as series, the mother, it's really scary to watch them descend into this sort of underworld experience where, you know, they are transforming and doing this really important work around their identity and who they're going to be in the world. Um, just like uh, Persephone, right? And so I, I was feeling yesterday a lot of grief around this whole process that my 15-year-old is going through. Um, and at the same time, this deep knowing that the wisdom here is to just hold them very, very gently like maybe in a way that where they don't even feel that I'm holding them, maybe that maybe I just need to just back off and even just surround them with love and light. And that's, that's all I can do. Or sometimes I need to intervene a little more or whatever it is. But I feel like that's so metaphorical to any and all kind of change that we are all going to going through now and certainly going to be going through next year with Pluto squaring the nodes. Um, yeah. Anyway. So those, that's my just, <laughs> my basic take. Oh, wow, Martha, thank you so, so much. And I have so many thoughts that I would love to share. And I say yes to everything you said. And it inspired me really, really deeply. And especially your deep wisdom about series. Um, I would love to um, say a little bit of something to first Diana, then to series and at the uh, at least to Hygieia, mm -hmm. because I feel that they are, all three of us, supporting us, or our energies that are around, that are supporting us in the same process of change. And I would like to start with Diana. She is in 50 degree Pisces and in a very, very close trine to the sun and to Mercury and of course to the south node and to venus and i have the feeling that with this south node and we experienced it at the solar eclipse in scorpio just uh, when we recorded and um, just one week ago um i have this deep feeling that diana in pisces is really a, as you said this element of rewilding this coming back to our truth to our true nature, to really um, getting the sense that we are a child of the cosmos and of the earth. So Diana is 
the goddess of untamed nature. She's goddess of the hunt and of the moon. She's in sync with nature, with the cosmos, with the stars, with the moon, with everything that is. She is part of nature. She has a very um, animistic worldview. So she lives separate from Mount Olympus, from the society, from the conditions, conditioning, from um, patriarchal systems, from hierarchy. She is living her own wild and free and untamed life just in alignment with what is what feels right and true for her. And in Pisces, there's so much about this surrendering everything that is, letting go, letting flowing away everything that is no longer true to a higher truth, to our truth. And she's trining this Scorpio North Node, a uh, South Node. And during the last days since the solar eclipse, um, the solar eclipse in my experience is kicked off a deep, deep, deep phase of purging so many old things that were maybe repressed since lifetimes came to the surface, showed up. It was very uncomfortable. I personally um, became aware of entanglements that I have met with um, souls that are no longer alive, that are no longer in my life. Um, entanglements and um, soul contracts maybe with ancestors everybody where we have given our power away. This all showed up, these all repressed Scorpio desires, um, um, fears came to the surface. And I have the feeling that Diana helps us to rewild this, all of that, to really cut cords, to say, okay, what is my truth? I'm independent. I can go away. I can survive alone. And she is really helping us to decondition, to let go of everything that is no longer true to us, and especially to take back our own power. So she's a very empowered, independent archetype, and uh, but a loving archetype. So it's this sort of, um, it's, and she's in Pisces, so it is not a harsh separation. It is like saying to somebody, I love you, but I even though you are there and I'm here and we are separate, we can separate lovingly, so to say. And Diana, is, I think, can help us to really um, surrender all of these old um, destructive um, entanglements and really trust, she's with Neptune, trust that we are held, that we are safe that we are loved, even though maybe trying to Venus, we leave certain relationships, we are still loved. And we are still loved by the earth, by our animal friends, by the spirits world, by God, by source, whatever you wanna, um, yeah, whatever is important for you. And then we come to Ceres. And I think Ceres gives us so much hope she is now in a trine, Diana is in a trine to the South Node, so rewilding, letting go of old energies. Um, and then we come to Ceres and she's in the trine to the North Node. Mm -hmm. And for me, this is a Ceres. She, she is still, she's still grieving. She is still there to help us to grieve because when we let go, it is very important that we allow ourselves to grieve. So yeah. when we are cutting cords, it's so important that we not just cut the cords, but it, we, can, we can know that this relationship or this soul contract was not good or even evil for us, but we can still grieve that it is over or that this old version of us has died. So we can still... We, we, I think it's very important that we allow ourselves to grieve that an older version of ourselves might be die because it's no longer true, but there is still grief there. And for me, the series is still grieving, but she's in a trying to the North Node. She already knows that her daughter Persephone will come back to her. Because mm -hmm. in the myth, we have this um, thing that Kore or Persephone, um, Ceres' daughter, is 
ab, yeah, she, she, Pluto maybe abducted her or she went to the underworld. And then we have this um, series was so bad that um, the god of the, the father of all gods, so Jupiter or Zeus, um, decided that Persephone shall be half a year in the underworld and half a year with Ceres. So we have spring and summer when um, Ceres is with her daughter and we have winter when Ceres is grieving because her daughter is in the underworld. And I have the feeling, especially with the Taurus and Virgo energy, that's a series. She knows now is winter. Now it's hard. Now there's sadness. Now there's even rage. Now there's grief. But I already know that spring will come. My, da my daughter will come back. And when I'm now Virgo, clearing the ground, really clarifying, detoxifying myself, clearing everything, um, allowing myself to look inward, to, um, to really focus on what is serving me and what is no longer serving me. When I'm now really clarifying my soul and come back to my pure essence, then the ground, the soil is perfectly prepared, Taurus, North Node, so that the new Uranus on the North Node can, the, the seed of the new can be planted in and the seed of the new can then grow on a, in a soil that is healthy. Mm -hmm. And we will see this over the next months the eclipses are, the next eclipses are then in spring. Mm -hmm. So um, these, it's so important that we are now doing the very, um, very dirty um, digging deep work so that we can with series lovingly. And I'm, I'm living in Austria and um, all around of me, the, the, um, I'm in a very rural area and here all around the farmers are clearing the ground. They are, they are preparing the ground for the next seeds, for the next harvest in summer. So now is the time and Ceres knows that. She is the goddess of cereals, of, um, yeah, of farming. And I think Hygieia, and now I come to Hygieia and then I will stop. Sorry that I'm so <laughs> long with that. Um, series is already this very, this discer having discernment, what is serving and what is no longer serving and trusting that it is important to sometimes, yeah, to let go of something. And then Hygieia is even helping us with this hygiene, really, um, <laughs> really becoming clear of all energies that are no longer serving us. And there comes this healing component with Hygieia too, I think, that she's like Hygieia there um, in a trine to Chiron, I think, and I would love to hear what, what you feel with Hygieia, but for me it is like she is, she's like the she connects Diana with Ceres, so she's in the T-square. So she's on the one hand, um, I think she can maybe help us to let go of everything that is no longer good because um, sometimes even in medicine, we have to cut off certain things or we have to sometimes kill um, certain entities that enter our bodies like viruses or something like that. So there is definitely something about hygiene, um, energetic hygiene. But on the other hand, I think um, she knows that maybe together with Chiron, there is this element of um, we can heal. We can heal from everything. And sometimes it takes time, as cheesy as it sounds. 
but that we can heal and that maybe all of these experiences that are now showing up and that feel so intense and that feel maybe we are literally confronted with that um, and with with loss and betrayal but i think that she holds this deep wisdom that sometimes illness comes to clarify the system so with a i think you talked about that in your hygiene i talked the fever that is lets us sweat everything out that was not me <laughs> okay then i i don't know maybe i have i have um read it somewhere but the fever that lets us sweat everything out so that after that we are like reborn mm. and um with Chiron there in Aries, there is something about what is our true will? What do we really want? Are we allowing ourselves to go for that that we want and to have a certain amount of self-centeredness in a good way and to um, really allow ourselves to uh, maybe... Aries cutting cords, saying no. Um, and maybe that is one part of our healing process to be to re-become the one and to reconnect with light sometimes can mean or can bring with it to discern what is no longer serving us. Yeah, but I will stop here. Yeah, I uh, love all of that. And the only other thing I'm feeling called to say about it is um, <clears throat> all of these energies with Ceres and Virgo, Diana in Pisces, Hygieia in Sagittarius, and then the Taurus stuff. All of it, to me, speaks of this natural wisdom the the wisdom of nature right like even hygieia in sagittarius has to do with natural law and the healing that is inherent in the the knowing of nature and the knowing of ourselves as our intuition and just who we are as natural beings um and i mean another thing i was feeling so strongly in my prayers is this strong need to like take a deep breath and drop back into the slowness, like the rhythm of the earth, the rhythm of our bodies, the natural wisdom, the natural rhythms, the natural um, healing state of being, which isn't necessarily slow because everything's relative, but it is much slower than what we tend to run as right like and i can speak in my own life but i think we tend to kind of like rush ahead move ahead and maybe this is also mars now going retrograde i don't know but it's this just this feeling of like in my own body i i just keep getting told by the spirit world and by my my own body wisdom to slow way down and find the rhythm that's natural to being in sync with the natural world and being in sync with myself as the earth and being in sync with the earth itself and being in sync with even the rhythms of the cosmos which is part of nature and we are part of nature there's no separation nature is everything <laughs> um but we tend to be out of sync i think with the rhythms of nature and i think this taurus energy and then all this other stuff is maybe one part is you know helping us to come back into that co-regulation with that natural rhythm and that there's such healing in that um yeah and again again brings us into a grounded wisdom about how to navigate change because when we are caught up in <clears throat> more of a Mars moving straight ahead or even like an older version of what Saturn energy might be, you know, that there's certain structures that should exist or should be done, things should be done in a certain way. 
we can get easily, very easily out of sync with what's actually natural to our being and our body and ourself as earth. Um, yeah, so that's the other component. Here. Yeah, I would love to add something to that that came up for me while you were speaking, um, or two things. One is Hygieia and change. Her symbol are these two snakes. And snakes are shedding skins. Mm, right. And it's a natural process of mm. change that happens all the time. And we, we are practicing evolutionary astrology. We know that change is inevitable. So maybe Hygieia has here this medicine for us to see and to understand and to feel that even though it feels scary and even though it feels very dark to be within the cocoon and not knowing that you will become the butterfly and sitting there and feeling maybe very, very um, scared that these, these processes, the caterpillar that becomes the butterfly, the snake that is shedding skins, it's part of nature. Yeah. And it's not a bad thing, even though it might feel scary from a human perspective. And that it would be even unnatural. And here we come to the, um, to the old version of Saturn, it would be even unnatural to hold on and to stuck into old systems that are not allowing us to grow and growing means change and growing comes with growing pain. And sometimes it's not comfortable, but it is part of nature. And I think here is this idea in this um, in Sagittarius where I always think about our, yeah, our, our truth, our, our nature, um, following our true nature and coming back to what is natural for us. And that is so much connected to Diana's archetype too. I personally co connect Diana very strongly to Sagittarius and to Capricorn, by the way. Um, and when I, when I was thinking what you were saying, this coming back to natural rhythms that include change, but to a certain slowness with Taurus, especially. I mean, Taurus is um, slow but steady change. Mm -hmm. I was really thinking about an experience that I had today in the afternoon um, because I must admit that this Mars stationing retrograde um, affects me personally very much. So it is opposing my Uranus, and we have in the collective, a very heightened Uran Uranus energy because of Uranus, lunar eclipse on the north node, Uranus in a square to Saturn and so on. And Uranus, especially opposing Mercury, can feel, it can feel ecstatic. Yes, that is one expression, but I think it reflects a really challenged nervous system. Yeah. on the other hand so yeah. it can feel really overwhelming and especially with mars and gemini we can have so many downloads that our system breaks and <laughs> that so many that we can be haunted by ideas yeah. and um we have can have running thoughts and completely be in our head and i think that that um what you were saying and i think that the goddesses um show us to really come back to nature, to come back to natural rhythms, to come back to cyclic rhythms, which are so, um, which are a part of the feminine energies. And I, I was very, very um, anxious and nervous the last days. And um, I went horseback riding today in the afternoon. And when I see Hygieia and Sagittarius and Chiron, mm -hmm. I had to think about this experience of horseback riding. Yeah. And because what is the feeling there? The feeling is a deep, deep connection to my animal body, 
-hmm. to the horse, which mirrors and symbolizes my animal body and to do horseback riding in nature. So to hear the river nearby, to feel the horse underneath me, to really um, activate my root chakra mm -hmm. by horseback riding. So really this, this deep wisdom and this deep medicine that nature holds for us, that is always there, that is, and we spoke about that, Martha, when we talked privately, um, this is abundance. Mm -hmm. This is this Taurus abundance that we cannot buy with money. Um, that nature, and I know that your new book is so much about that, that nature is, the earth is a natural resource for us to find healing, to find peace, to find calmness within these changes that can feel so frightening for our human self, for our ego, because our human mind and our ego wants to save us and hold us back because the unknown is unsafe. So we can have these anxious thoughts, but when we regularly really reconnect with animals, with nature, when, yeah, that can so much help in these intense times of change to, yeah, to really come back into the body and to, yet to, to allow ourselves and to allow our soul to fully incarnate and not to escape um, and go away. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All of the above, yes. Um, that feels pretty complete to me mm -hmm. in terms of discussing the eclipse. Should we talk a little bit about what now what we're offering in the coming yeah. Week, months? <laughs> Yeah, I think that would be great. Maybe you can um, close the chart. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. Um, so first we could talk about the eclipse gathering that we're having, which is next Monday, uh, November 7th, which is the day before this eclipse. And um, <clears throat> what we're going to be doing in that gathering essentially is to be dropping into the energetics of this eclipse time and it's not it and we will be sharing you know our thoughts on the eclipses from our brains but really more what we're going to intend to be doing is to help each of us drop into our own felt sense of the energetics of these eclipses this eclipse eclipse portal if you want to call it that and and where the the medicine the wisdom um and the transformation might be happening in each of our own lives um so it's really a time for you for any of you who feel called all of you who feel called to join us in that gathering it's really a time for you to drop into your personal feeling your personal wisdom your personal experience of the intention behind these eclipses in your own life. Um, and we will, as part of the, the, the fee for the gathering itself, we are happy to look at where the eclipses fall, just, you know, in a very general sense in your chart. And then we're also offering discounted sessions. If you want a full session from either of us or both of us um, on, you know, how, like we, we would look at, like we kind of did with my, when I was talking about my own chart, that uh, series right now is at the eclipse is going to be pretty much on my moon and Diana is going to be right on my sun and Hygieia will be right on my Neptune. <laughs> so so the, this T-square we were just talking about happens for me, happens to be sitting straight on really major parts of my chart, which is probably why it's coming up for me in such a personal way, um, you know, with my 15 year old, for example, right. And so it's aspecting lots of things in my own chart around mothering and that kind of thing. So, um, so in a, in a deep dive sesh, actual session with us, we would look at more complex, complex things like that. Um, but just as part of the 
workshop itself, we would give you a sense of, yeah, the, the full moon will be in your eighth house, et cetera. Um, and did you want to say anything else about the workshop? Yeah, I just wanted to shortly mention that um, it doesn't matter um, when you are watching if you are a professional astrologer or if you are an advanced astrology student or if you have no astrological astrological background at all. Everybody's welcome because I think especially when you're an astrologer, but you want more in come into the feeling of the, the really dropping into your body and feel the energies, it's perfect. So not just theoretically talk about it, but really feel it and really feel what wisdom holds this eclipse um, portal for you personally and feel into your own body wisdom. I think it's perfect to really live astrology in this way. And if you have no astrological background at all, it is perfect too, because it's about feeling and you have wisdom inside of you. Yes. So then it, it's nice to maybe hear something about um, astrology, uh, the, 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 the eclipses that Martha and I will um, shortly um, explain, but it's not the main focus. So right. yeah, everybody's welcome. Yeah. And I think, you know, the energy of this eclipse is so much about the wisdom of our bodies. So that really will be the, the main point of the workshop. Yeah. yeah. And we all have that wisdom, just like you said. Um, and then, yeah, then we're going to be starting in January, we're going to be offering, uh, this goddess series. So I'm, we'll say more about that as it gets a little closer, but just briefly, uh, we're going to first be holding a, um, an introductory goddess, sort of a restoring of the goddesses workshop in January. And then we're going to focus on one goddess per month through 2023 where we're going to we're going to start out with Persephone as our plan at this moment and um and then series and then um go from there but uh our intention is to really again drop into both the the cognitive intellectual wisdom i mean um uh, knowledge of these goddesses you know what their what their archetype is what their mythology is but not so much focus on that really more a focus on how are these energies growing and changing and what is the wisdom that comes up in each of us in Verena, in me and each of you with each of these goddesses and how are they a living breathing energy that that is really needing and wanting to come back into the world in a living, breathing way. Um, so we're going to have a, essentially a deep dive into one goddess at a time for a whole month where we will meet twice per month just to feel into each of the goddesses and then, uh, and then have a separate time. So one, we'll have one meeting where it's more of a workshop kind of a feeling, and then we'll have a separate meeting um, also in that same month where we, where it's more about sharing what has arisen for each of us around that goddess archetype as we've been feeling into it. What do you, you want to add something to that? Yeah, I think you already covered the most important things. What um, is really maybe um, significant of these workshop series that we are doing is that we really want to um, bring the not- so well-known goddesses mm -hmm. in our life so yes of course we will cover the four main goddesses series Pallas Athena um, Vesta and Juno but additionally we will talk about different other asteroid goddesses like Persephone like um, we have not Hecate mm -hmm. so there are many many different um asteroid goddesses and other feminine archetypes like Sedna or Eris that are no asteroids but important too um, that we want to cover and so it's really interesting and I think I and heart opening um, to attend um, especially when you are interested in these different facets of the feminine archetype and how it is alive now we really want to let go of 
old and maybe sometimes a little bit biased um, perspectives on the goddesses and really explore them in a new way, discover them with you together in a new way. And yeah, I think because of that, it's so important that we have these um, one goddess per month, two meetings, one workshop and feeling and the second one, the second meeting two weeks later is more sharing circle where we really, um, yeah, explore together what's coming up. Yeah. Yeah. And I've just been, you know, we did this Diana workshop already together, um, which again is available now as a online Diana journey and there's community sharing with that. And that's, so that's available. Um, but as, as we did that, and then also as I did the, my talk on Hygieia and my talk on Ceres and Persephone, I've been hearing from so many of you, uh, so many people writing to me about how these goddesses have been waking up in each of our lives. And it's amazing. It is not a coincidence. <laughs> it's, you know, so like a lot of time, what will happen is someone will write to me and say, um, Diana has been the main goddess who has been speaking to me for the last X, Y, Z number of months or whatever it is. And then, you know, I'll do a reading or I'll look at their chart or whatever it is. And I'll notice, yeah, she is currently conjunct your son or, you know, something. Um, and it's, it just is not a coincidence. I think these, this feminine, again, not female feminine archetypes are needing it's like they're almost, I feel it like almost emerging from the earth like the earth like Gaia is another another of these archetypes right it's like I feel like Gaia is helping us all all of these to wake back up in us in the world um because they're needed and and like we talked about in this video just now even in like this eclipse when we add in the story the energy the healing the wisdom of these goddesses especially in this more alive way this living breathing way there's just so much potential that it, at least for me is beyond what i can even understand yet um my understanding of the purpose of the reemergence of this is every day is growing and changing so yeah yeah completely um just one little thing to add is that um i um i'm from austria and from germany and um i think one and a half year ago i already did in german language an asteroid goddess two-part workshop series about the main four goddesses and it's it's actually still available um uh, on my on my homepage but what I experienced there, and my approach was a little, was similar um, to ours. So I um, recorded meditations where you can connect with the goddess within, and I got so amazing feedback. And mm. still, um, people who attended to the workshop say that they have anchored these goddesses as allies, as allies, mm. um, as inner guides in their life. And I think just to, to really um, explain what we mean when we say how it is alive. We will, we together will guide you when you attend at the workshop um, into, a, yeah, into a meditation journey, into an experience where you really feel the energy of these archetypes inside of yourself. So it's, it's not that you just look at the screen and we have slides and you get with you got information you really drop into your body and connect with the energy yeah yeah and another part of our intention um over the year and beyond even the year is to cultivate a community where we're all sharing like when a lot of people have sent me paintings they've done of the goddess archetypes like you have one of your diana paintings back there yeah <laughs> two of them yeah. um <laughs> So you're doing paintings, people are writing poems. Um, the, the, this ener these energies are needing to move in so many different ways. And part of our intention is to have, to hold space in a community space where people, we all can be sharing how these feminine archetypes are needing to move through us um, and into the world. Cause it's not only about talking, it's also, you know, art and music and poetry and 
dance and it just needs to move in so many different ways. Yeah. Yeah. And what you said, I think it's so interesting that um, both of us got so much feedback every time when we are speaking about goddesses and goddess archetypes. So there is something with that. So I'm, I'm not sure what it is, but there is something very, very important. And it's this idea to hold this workshop series came to both of us. So it's important that here is something to learn and to embrace and to bring, bring to life yeah. again. And I just wanted to say, um, it's not just for souls who identify as women. So yeah. I really want to, to say that we are talking about feminine archetypes that are everywhere. It does not matter um, how you identify um, or how do you feel or everybody's welcome. Yeah, Everybody. we would love to have people who identify as women, men, transgender, uh, non-binary, gender fluid, all of the above, <laughs> anything. The soul yeah. has no gender. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. And I think when you when you want to learn more about the Goddess series, there's not yet um, something where you can sign up, but you can sign up for Martha's or for my newsletter and you will find um, the links to Martha's homepage and to my newsletter uh, list um, below the video. So when you sign up there, you will get all the information as soon as we have more. Yeah, and if this is really piquing your interest, we would love to know that. So please mm -hmm. email either of us or yeah. both of us, yeah. I mean, the wait list is already open. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wonderful. Okay, I think that's everything I wanted to say. Anything else yeah. for you? um just really quickly when you speak german mm -hmm. i'm starting my living astrology intense program where the focus lies on really living astrology working actively with with transits and um, really embody the archetypes and this is starting in january so if you are interested in a german astrology program yeah Write me an email or maybe find the link below the video too. Um, just that. And we both would love to hear what you are thinking about uh, the lunar eclipse and about our, um, yeah, our transmissions about the goddesses. So we would love if you comment below this video and if you like the video, share it. And yeah, let us know what you feel and think. Yeah, it really helps us to hear from you. So. Thank you. <laughs> Talk to you right. soon.